we have a special guest, Diane Kapili, who is an REF Batch 2 graduate, and she was able to get a client one month after. Correct, Diane? <laughs> yes. Correct. Okay. So you said you were a freelancer, Diane. So how did you get into freelancing and into copywriting? Well, I just actually started uh, freelancing last June when I joined the freelance movement tribe. So I got into it just honestly out of curiosity um, what, how I can earn money online because the other freelancing um, gig that I have was photography, which I do on weekends. Mm -hmm. And because um, every all the businesses are going digital nowadays, so I just decided to okay give it a try and find out a skill or that I can learn and use. And luckily, I guess copywriting is what resonated or appealed with me the most. Although I like most of you, you've probably been con content writers or I don't know bloggers, but me. I'm a photographer. I work in a bank, so it's really nothing related to copywriting. But I guess, I mean, the process of writing, I'm able to, in my work, I also do it because I write process notes. I write, I review papers. So I guess, I mean, that's the right kind of writing that I do or am able to, I have experience in. Okay, so you said copywriting resonated with you, Diane, uh, mm -hmm. and you said that writing for your work as a bank <laughs> yeah. somehow helped you. So somehow with copywriting, what did you like about it? Why copywriting? As what you said, photography is somehow different from copywriting, the right? <laughs> so why copywriting? Yeah. Well, I guess I like the fact that you're able to persuade people, um, not just to not just to buy, but maybe to somehow um, change their the way they think about a certain product or about a certain belief or idea that you're writing about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just kind of interesting how you can put together something that makes people think twice. Or um, um, makes them discover something new along the way as well. Okay. Wow, so that's then. nice to know. So bank, I know work mo sa bank, Diane. Uh, I'm a controls officer. So mainly, um, for example, if there are audits, we are the one who talk to the audit. We, uh, we serve as the liaison officers between the auditors and the businesses or for example if there are new regulations that are issued for example by the BSP or um, or other regulatory bodies we go through it and we ensure that the businesses will apply it or will do it or will comply mm -hmm. how long have you been working in a bank Diane uh, more than ten years. Wow! But it's, uh, but it's uh, I know it's I'm I did different roles. It's not just controls. Like mm -hmm. I've been in operations, investments, so. Okay, and then you got interested into freelancing, so photography, yes. and then copywriting. Wow! Yes. Did a friend somehow influence that decision to go into freelancing? Um. Not actually, uh, well, I just saw some friends going into it. So I guess I just got curious. There are photographer friends too who tried copywriting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess I got, oh, okay, what are they doing? And then, I mean, I guess it goes with the times also that there are a lot of people really go going online nowadays. So I got yours and tried it out for myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So how long have you... How long have you been copywriting, Diane? Well, I can say it's just four months, three to four months. If I started last July, yeah, wow, three to four months, three yeah. to four months, and then you already have a client, the yes. bank. <laughs> yes. So when you started, how did you find copywriting? Was it easy or was it difficult? Um. 
Well, I guess the difficult part for me was how do I start? But the research part, um, it's something that I didn't hesitate on doing because I also, I mean, I love reading, but not, uh, I love reading self-help books. I just mm. love um, reading about how I can improve myself. So that's mostly what I read. And also at work, of course, I have to read. Like, I ha- we have to read <laughs> regulations. So I guess the re- research part, that's something that, okay, I can use that uh, experience in copywriting. So, um, of course, before I just, I was also wondering how do these writers come up with all these ideas? And then I didn't really know that, oh, okay, research was such a big part of it. So I guess that's also what, in a way, gave me the confidence na, oh, okay, this is something that I can do, something that I can try out. And so I guess the difficult part was how to start with all the theories, all the theories of persuasion, how I am able, how I will be able to apply it, how I will be able to, I guess, combine the data that I gathered into a cohesive um, like paragraph or something that people can read that will enable them to change their minds. Mm. So it's difficult and not even easy, but I guess the term for me would be doable. Like it's mm. something that you can learn. It's something that, but I'm not sure if you don't like reading it. But I guess if you want to learn something, you can always do something about it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you said that this is not, REF is actually not the first copywriting course you've enrolled yeah. at. So somehow, how did you discover REF, Diane? Um, I discovered it through friends. Mm. Referral yeah. then. <laughs> yes. Um, I discovered it through him because he tagged me when Coach Miguel opened it. In photographer so then, friend. No, as in Coach Franz Valdivia. Ah, okay. Yeah, because he is from the tribe. And then when I got to knew that he was the person who wrote the sales, the sales letter for my um, batch in the freelance movement tribe. Mm. So I got curious about, oh, okay. And then I, I, I'm not sure how I got to know that Coach Miguel was his, maybe from reading again in the thread. Um, Somehow I got, I found out that Coach Miguel is his mentor. Mm. And then eventually found out that some other people in the tribe um, also studied under Coach Miguel. So of course I got curious if I, oh, okay, all this, people have a common coach mm. so and well not all of them at least for coach friends i saw his results and then ah, i think i also read about uh i'm not sure where maybe in the tribe again i also read about um alan mo and john that they also get coach miguel or i think friends coach friends at uh, no to write their sales pages so I think, oh, of course, that result somehow made me think that, okay, so um, I don't really knew Coach Miguel at this point, but I guess from his students, I will, at least I know that I'm getting into something that works because mm. of what his students have, have achieved so far. So, and then at the time also, when I was starting copywriting, I, 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 of course, I really, at the start, I really don't know like what kind of copywriting I wanted to get into. Mm. So the reason why I wanted to re- enroll in rapid email frameworks because I thought, um, okay, at least emails, they're like shorter pieces of content. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm correct, but shorter pieces of content that I can start with given that I'm don't have extensive writing experience. So I wanted to start as an email copywriter first before jumping into the sales page copywriting. So that's mm. also one of the reasons. Yeah, and because you just I, you just started copywriting yeah. four months yeah. along. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So short form copy. Yeah. Yes. So that's 
that's at least that's the idea that I had. Okay. Wow, you took a risk actually. So you just knew copywriting and then you knew the people behind it, the sales letters that made you actually join the tribe. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> and yes. you did some background checking exactly. then. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> That's I really talk, nice. I stalk, <laughs> I stalk some people. Of them. Yeah, I stalk some of them too. <laughs> so when you joined REF, what was your number one goal, Diane? Well, my number one goal was really to learn. I mean, to learn the basics like how to start and how to go about the process of producing copy, like producing persuasive copy. Like, I didn't... Um, um, I honestly didn't know what to expect. So I was just really, okay, I'm just, I just want to open myself to mm. learning because yeah. it's my first time. And I guess, I, I and in the process, I, I I actually enjoyed the process. So that's also how I got to know, and I'm like, okay, this is really something that I can get into. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the process of watching the video, then researching for the material and then writing about it. What so, do you like yeah. most about the process? The yeah, you said something about research. Was that your most yeah favorite? I guess I like the <laughs> yeah. I like the research process. I like the writing process too. But sometimes actually um in the writing process sometimes well at this point at least I still get not the one writer's block, but sometimes I get a lot of okay, I have all the data and then Sometimes I still get confused what data to use. I mean, like I have this central idea in my head and then something, oh, I, maybe I can use this. Oh, I want to use this too. So sometimes I still get that. Um, I guess I like the research process and just, you know, finding out about um, what people feel about certain products, what, um, what they have to say, what, I mean... That's actually one of the things that surprised me that, oh, yeah, you can u- really use people's review to write something. And I, I guess it's one of the discoveries that, um, oh, so this is what writers actually write. <laughs> so I guess the research. I like the research part. Mm, wow, that's really nice. Mm. Diane, I think a lot of people <laughs> sometimes find research difficult, actually. But oh, you enjoy mo <laughs> yung research well, process. Guess not- all of it. I mean, of course, if it's like when I try this, for example, my my supplement niche client, it's a bit hard because it's there's like a lot of jargons mm. or like technical terms, like medical terms or I what the names of the medicines or the ingredients. But yes. it's well, I guess what. A, well, it's both hard and easy, but I guess it's also part of the process because you won't have anything to write about. Because I used to think that writers, I mean, certain writers are knowledgeable about certain topics, um, and that's what they use to write. But I did, I really didn't think that you go through the reviews, you go through the. I would think you go through the journals, but not through the customer reviews, actually. Mm. So I guess that's also why I enjoyed it because like some new discoveries on my part as well or some new um, learnings that I get to apply in my first client. Mm, that's so, so yeah. nice. So hands-on. Hands-on yes. ka because it's a different niche talaga. Yes. Supplement. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> So when you joined Ref, what was the thing that helped you most, Diane? How did it, did it help you secure the client, Diane? Yes, because the learnings, like the theories, I guess, combination, the theories from the videos and also the theories from the, uh, no, the lessons from the Q&A, the mm-hmm. weekly Q&A with, that we do with Coach Miguel, helped me to secure because every like the things that I actually um emphasize to the client like how I can use this sequence to give him poten- potential sales is really just what I used in my proposal 
and in mm. my emails with email exchanges with him. So, yes, it really helped me. I mean, I closed this client through email. I didn't, we didn't even go through a discovery call. Oh wow! So yeah. written, written, <laughs> written, written. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I'm also very thankful that this client booked me because I, I mean, my tribe mate who referred this client to me was initially offering him like I think branding services or something, but then this client. Um, was looking for an email marketer and then my tribe mate just uh, alerted me hey do you want to try okay so for me because it's my I guess it's also because it's also my first time I'm not yet choosy in my niche I mean my ni- my initial niche was really coaches but then okay I just really wanted to give it a try because I also wanted to apply the course immediately I wanted to um, also see for myself if I can do it. And then luckily, this client booked me. And then, yeah, I hope we get the results that we want. Okay, that's good to know. So, with a client, how long have you been working with a client, Diane? Uh, we started October. Oh, yeah. so very then, recent. Yeah, very recent. I actually, our original timeline was only one month. But then, the, I don't know, in the process... I guess the, the client changed his website, the client changed some of his um, material. So the initial research that I did, okay, was, well, I didn't um, repeat it. I didn't repeat everything, honestly, but I don't know, maybe he's also in the process of, <laughs> of revamping his materials. So in a way, I didn't get to, I, I guess I just started working on the, I started writing just, probably around two weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, and also finalizing the other sequences. Because apparently, this client, pa, he's he's also working with another copywriter who was like doing weekly emails. Oh. So I just, but I just discovered that when we already, like he already paid me, he already, he already signed the contract. I mean, but in the contract, I just like promised him, I think, two se- few sequences and then review his current emails. Mm. So I just got surprised in the mid- when while we were working when I was already okay I will start reviewing your sequences and then editing it. That's when he told me na oh you can't edit it because um because another copywriting copywriter is working on it. So just focus on the sequences. So okay, but anyway, okay. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this so you have a different focus pala. You're not the one writing, but you're the one reviewing. Well, I'm writing two sequences, but mm. part of the review of his initial request to me was to review his current like his weekly emails, like one broadcast email that he sent. Oh, so, yes. So, yeah, so I agreed to it together with the sequences. And then only to be surprised that the original agreement, another copywriter fellow was working on it. So he asked me to re- he asked me to review another actually sequence, which is his welcome sequence. Mm. And then I ended up revising the whole thing. Oh wow. So, well <laughs> well I well based from what I learned from Coach Miguel, because it's well but that welcome basa yon so parang there was no preframe there so I had to tell him all of that and then so well luckily I got to charge extra I didn't charge a lot because okay since it's my first client it's also well learning time for me I guess so at least I got to apply again another mm. thing that I learned wow that's good any future plans Dayan are you going to focus on uh, copywriting or getting copywriting clients after yes. this? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, well, I'm not sure yet if I'm going full-time anytime soon. But yeah, I plan to get on copywriting clients. Maybe not as much as the others. But mm. um, at least, I don't know, one to two or one to three clients a month. Mm. If I can. It depends. Yeah, because you're still working, <laughs> Diane. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. I think you were able to juggle your time very well, honestly. 
you're doing photography on weekends, you have a copywriting client, and then you also work at the yeah, bank but, still. Well, I guess since if, well, I guess my photography gigs stopped for a bit for a while mm. on weekends because I'm shooting kitty parties. Oh. And so of course I would understand that they um I wouldn't have any as much clients and I'm also not very keen on taking on a lot um like kiddie parties because kids I mean high risk and also I guess some of the time that I used to shoot is I can use it for copywriting yeah because yeah. of the situation right now. Yes, yeah. and that's what I like about copywriting too, that I can just do it at home using my laptop and I'm all good to go. I mean, yes. not much capital, I guess. That's also another reason why, well, I guess all freelancing opportunities, man, you only need a laptop, but I don't know, but copywriting is what fascinated <laughs> with me the most. As long as you have the skill, yeah. man, it would be so easy. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. So what about for people who wanted to go into email copywriting pero they're not really sure? What can you say about them? Or do you have a message for them, Diane? Mm. Well, I guess uh, one, you have to be clear that you want to go into email copywriting. Um, if not clear, but at least um, I guess you have to make a conscious effort or decision to learn it once you get in the program because um, you're also investing hard-earned money. So um, you should do everything to learn everything that you can, even if it's just, uh, even if you're just starting out. I mean, if you really want to learn something, um, I know you can do it. Um, well, because for me, I really don't have any writing background. Or, but I guess what you also have to do is to just do the homework, do the even if um it means um exerting extra time or effort. Well, admittedly, for me, when I was doing rep, um, there are days that I did like the. I think three, four, three, was it three? Three, three emails all at, in one day. <laughs> but but I guess I was able to do it because the whole week I was doing the research. So, I mean, it's not like I did the research on a Saturday. Like the, for from Monday to Friday, for example, I do the video on Monday, um, take notes from that, video and then do the research um from i don't know i'm not sure i don't i can't remember if i spent 30 minutes to one hour per day to do mm. the research like to do the to fill up the market research template yes as much as i can so at least by that i know that by the time at least by friday or saturday at least i already have sort of ideas in my head or ideas in my head on what to write. So, come Saturday, I'll do all the writing and no more research. So, I guess that's also how I did it. I mean, um, because at least if you have the ideas already in your head, if you already have um, ideas or whatever, um, like topics that you want to focus on, then you'll just um, not literally fill in the blanks, but at least... Um, somehow you already have an idea how you want your ideas to flow. So mm. you just write. So I think it's still doable. It's still... And that's also how you get to apply the lesson. So I guess it's really important. And um, the feedback is also super valuable. Like see, Coach April, they, um, they really give you the uh, line-by-line review. Of, I mean of what you've written so from there at least you will know how to improve where where um like not just how you can improve your writing but how the ideas or the logic will flow so that your copy will convert 
through there. So, well, I guess just go for it. That's just also my <laughs> my message. Just go for it. I mean, if especially if you really because for me, if you decide to invest in something, right? So you should also um do your part. I mean, but you'll be sure that Coach Miguel and the coaches will do their part. That that you can be sure. But if you don't do yours or if you don't do the homework, then you will really not know if you've learned something or um, if um, your writing is already good enough or something like that. And I guess if you're an inexperienced writer, it's also good to like pick the brains of other people. Like, I mean, for me, I can't say that because I'm not yet an experience. So for me, I really just like take myself as an like empty cup and then take everything in and write again. But for if you're an experience, I think you can still benefit, um, I mean, based from the feedback of other because sometimes, of course, writers also have their own ideas, right? Or their own writing styles. So I think if you're a bit more experienced than me, then you can also learn a thing or two from other fellow copywriters. Yes. Wow. Thank you, Diane, with what you said. So the good thing about you going into REF is that REF has your back, right? You actually learn the yeah. process. Ang ganda ng process mo, actually. <laughs> it's like an advice. If you go into REF, this is what you should do. Diba? <laughs> so you <laughs> went. <laughs> yeah, I just went <laughs> you went in as what you said yeah. you are an empty cup you were open to the learnings and you were able to pick the brains of your mentors inside ref yeah. as well and then as what you said you your schedule monday you do the video the rest yeah. of the weekdays yeah, the you did the research days. you let yeah. your idea simmer and then when saturday comes you actually write your email yeah. copy already yeah. Ang ganda. <laughs> You were able to do that. You were able to have a process. And yes, you get the feedback, yung frameworks inside REF as well. So thank you so much, Diane, for being with us, right, <laughs> for answering all my questions today. So I hope to hear from you soon as well. And I hope to actually hear a lot more wins from you in the future, Diane. Congratulations, Talaga. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Diane. <laughs> thank you.